Hi there, this is going to be just a very quick tutorial on how to edit Stardew Valley maps using Tide. So first we'll discuss how to extract the map files into something we can use, and we'll do that using XMB node. Then we'll open our files in Tide, we'll make edits to them using items from the tile sheets, and maybe add a new tile sheet. We'll also discuss custom properties just a little bit, and then how to save our map file how to repack it again using XMB node, and then how to put those back into our game folder. So let's get started. I have a new folder called Maps, and inside Maps I've installed XMB node, and then I have another folder called Base Files. Inside Base Files I have placed certain map files from the game that I want to edit. So I want to edit Farmhouse 1, and I included these other files here because some of them were dependencies to Farmhouse 1. Ty told me that, oh, you can't open this unless you have these extra files. So I've added them here, and what I want to do is extract all of these files and access my map in Tide. So to do that, I'm going to have XMB node extract them for me. So in the command prompt, I'm going to tell it to change directory to where XMB node is stored, and from here, I'm going to ask S XMB node here to extract base files and put them in another folder. If I don't already have another folder made, whatever I type here will be created as a new one. So I'm going to have it go to edit files and if we take a look at our folder again, inside edit files we have the extracted version of everything. So here are the unpacked base files and then here are what they look like when they're unpacked. So I want to open Farmhouse 1, and it's a TBIN binary map file. So going to Tide, I'm going to go to File, and then Open, navigate to wherever I have those files, and in the lower right-hand corner here, I can choose to change the file type it's looking for to match that TBIN, and here I have Farmhouse 1, and hit Open. So now I have my map open in Tide, and I want to do just a very quick overview of some of the features inside Tide itself. We have our canvas in the center here, and then we have a map explorer, a tile picker, and then off to the far right we have a toolbar. And if we go to the map explorer, we can see that there's different layers to our map, and we can click through them to see them all together. We can also right-click a layer and make it invisible if we want to hide, say, a specific portion and only work on one without having to see a bunch of clutter. Below that we have a tile sheets area, and these are where those dependencies are opened. And inside here are individual tiles. So we can see the tiles for each folder by going to our tile picker, and we have a drop down menu down here where we can see the different tiles in each one. So if we take a look at the back section, we can see that this layer has some really black files around the edge, or tiles around the edge, and that is actually this tile right here. And if we look at, say, buildings, we see that it has like a fireplace and the countertops for the kitchen, and we can find those in here as well. Here's the edge of the bed. Um, let's look a little further down here to see what else we can find. <laughs> well, there are more here. I <laughs> just it's very hard to see in this layout. And that's because this is laid out in such a way that each of the tiles has their own identifier and it's set up to show us in order. And I can see maybe a specific tiles identifier to find it by clicking on it. So here, we're just hovering over it even. But on this one, if we look way down below, we can see that it says position 17, untitled tile sheet is where it's found, and it's index 227. So if we go to untitled tile sheet and find 227, so there's 150, 173, you can see I'm looking down straight below. 227, right here. So here is that very same map tile. 
Now, if we want to add an individual tile, uh, it's very easy. We just make sure we are in our tool that says lay individual tiles with the shortcut of T. And here we can pick one of these and then place it on our map. So let's say I want to place this potted plant. So I click on it and then click my map and I now have a potted plant on my map. If I want to add like a whole grouping of tiles, I can do that. Um, it's easiest to change our layout here to show our tiles, how they look on the actual image itself. So I'm going to click this button and now we can see kind of the groups of tiles that we've got going on. And let's say I want to add this blue couch. So I'm going to choose my other tool called lay a block of tiles and its shortcut is B and just click and drag across these three. And now I can place down a couch, oh, let's place it right there, on our design. Um, now these are just what's included with this map file. If we want to use a different tile sheet, maybe there's another one in the game that has, you know, a, a specific tile we want to use. We can add tile sheets to certain map files. We can to this one. And I'm going to add a tile sheet here by going to Tile Sheets and then right click, choose New. I can give my tile sheet a name, let's call it new tile sheet, and then I can find my tile sheet. I've already unpacked it because it was inside base files earlier, so here's my festivals that I want to use. And then also on the alignment tab, we want to make sure that we're setting the tile size to 16 by 16. And then we can hit apply and close and we have a new tile sheet. Here, um, it's already updated for me in the tile picker to show the new content, but let's say I want to add maybe this yellow star in my kitchen and, oh, maybe a pumpkin right here. Perfect. All right, so here I've edited my map. Uh, I'm going to leave it at this for now. But one thing, oh, the last thing I did want to cover, sorry, is that some of these individual tiles have properties set to them. So if we right click a tile and choose tile properties here, we can see if they have anything assigned. So if I look at, say, my fireplace, right click, it has a property called action and then it does SADF. Um, if I go to my back layer, I know that there's one here and I can see that no furniture is set to true and then touch action it does something. I believe same for the one right next to it. Here the touch action is actually sleep so this tile when you walk on it will ask your character if it wants to sleep because of the custom property that we have set up here. A quick way to see what tiles might have a property and what tiles might not is way down here, uh, kind of where you can see the, the index number for a tile, we'll see a little icon pop up when we hover over certain ones. So here there's no icon, no icon, no icon. Now we can see it. It's to the right of the IDX 352. So icon, no icon. But the ones with an icon are the tiles that have a custom property. And custom properties can do all sorts of things and we've got a list of them on the forum thread that I will link below as well for you. Anyway, that's what I wanted to cover so far. So let's save our map and then access it in game. So I'm going to file and save as. Make sure I'm in the right place. So I'm inside of edit files again. And I'm going to make sure I'm changing this to .tbin. And hit save. <coughs> so that already exists. I know. Perfect. Next up, um, we can see our map edit files and then if we look at the date modified this is the one that we just changed. Now I want to package all of these guys back up into a new folder and I'm going to do that again using xmb node. So in my command prompt which I already have open I'm going to type xmb node pack and this time I'm taking everything inside edit files and I'm putting it somewhere else. I'm going to call it done files and hit enter and it will go for me. Now inside done files are my repackaged piles, or fi files, there we go. I want to copy farmhouse one, 
and paste it back into my game folder. So I'm going to find maps inside here and then paste it. Yes. And now I want to run my game. So if I go to Stardew Valley and open it up, it will start for me. So my game is loading here and take just a moment to load and we'll pick one of my characters and hopefully when you load up here we will see our map perfect all right so here we have our potted plant and the couch and the pumpkin uh, one thing I want to cover again is that custom property so remember the fireplace had that one uh, action and then ADSF what that does is just turn this off and on and then same for the bed remember when we walked over the bed and it said sleep that's what brings up the sleep dialogue uh, but there we have it we've covered everything I wanted to cover but if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the thread that I link below where we are discussing all things tied and map related all right thank you for watching and have a great day